Hi, my name is Henry, and if you're new to my channel, I've been using Procreate for my architectural design work for the last couple of years, which has essentially replaced my need for the trace paper, pencil at pens, and scale. By the way, you can hear my rant about the scale in my other video here. So Procreate isn't exactly designed for architecture, and there are many tools that we're not likely to use, but I've compiled my top 20 tips that I think will greatly benefit architects and interior designers with their workflow. I would say this is more of an intermediate tutorial for those that are already using Procreate, but if you're just getting started, I recommend watching this video here. Tip number one is using Procreate's internal grid to help you sketch better. You can turn this on by going into Actions, Canvas, and toggle on the Drawing Guide option. In the Edit Drawing Guide menu below, you can adjust the color, opacity, thickness of the grid, and more importantly, the grid density. This grid feature is very useful if you need to sketch something to scale like a detail. Tip number two is the assisted drawing, which is an option next to the grid size. Turning this on, you will have the ability to draw parallel to the grid at 90 degrees. I have the double tap function on my second generation Apple Pencil set to enable this option, which makes it really easy to switch back and forth from freehand drawing to straight line drawing. Sometimes I like to use this straight line style more because it's faster than me trying to wiggle my way across the page like no architect. As a side note, if you didn't know this already, you can also turn your freehand into a straight line by holding it down at the end before lifting up your pencil. Cool, right? Tip number three is a shortcut to enable full screen mode, which I have set by tapping with four finger on the screen. Hiding the navigation bar gets me a little Little bit more canvas to draw which is even more important if you're using a small ipad i find the 12.9 inch model is most suitable for my own needs and if you're considering upgrading i have another video here on which ipad to buy for architects tip number four is using the reference feature to bring in an external image as a reference when you are out and about without a computer nearby this keeps both your reference and sketch on one screen. You can even resize this window to make it bigger or smaller, pinch to zoom, and also move around this window as needed. Tip number five is the quick menu customization. I have set this action for this rounded square icon between the brush size slider and the opacity slider. This brings up my six frequently used action like the new layer, alpha lock, reference tool, assisted drawing, and etc. To set up the custom action, just tap and hold the text box and find another action that you wanted to replace it with. Tip number six is the copy and paste shortcut. Once you have something selected using the selection tool, you can pull down with three finger to enable this copy and paste menu. This is useful if you need repeating furniture like a bed without drawing it multiple times. Once you make a duplicate, you can use the move tool to move it around, flip it horizontally or vertically, and rotate it as necessary. Tip number seven is selection tool visibility control action. I know it sounds like a handful. When you have something selected by default, Procreate makes this mask really hard to see because it's very faint, but you can go into the preference and increase the selection mask visibility, which will make the mask easier to see. Tip number eight is the customized gesture control preference. In this menu, you can choose how you want to enable certain action via a shortcut with Apple Pencil or various finger gesture. For example, here are a few of my settings for the assisted drawing, quick menu, full screen, copy and paste, and general settings. Also in the general settings, I have the disable touch option turned on, which will protect you from accidentally drawing with your finger, so you can only draw with Apple Pencil. Tip number nine is pressure sensitivity for your Apple Pencil. I have mine set to a curve like this from the default flat diagonal. I find this makes the pencil more sensitive to my drawing pressure, so I don't have to press as hard on the screen. Give this a try if you have a lighter touch on the screen like me. Tip number nine is switching between the brush, smudge, and the eraser. Did you know if you switch from the brush to the eraser by holding it, it will erase with the same brush setting. This applies to the smudge as well. It makes things a little faster if I am using a marker brush and I also want to erase quickly with the same marker brush. 
Hooray, we are halfway through. Thank you for sticking around this far. If you are finding this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Tip number 11 is a quick hide and show all layers. Sometimes you have too many layers and it's hard to know where certain things are drawn on, but you can tap and hold the layer checkbox to isolate the content. You can do the same by turning everything back on again by holding the same layer check mark. Tip number 12 is creating your own color palette instead of using Procreate's suggested color scheme. You can do this by creating a new color palette, give it a name and set it to default. Then what I like to do is bring a reference image and sample colors that you like from that image and save it as a new color in the swatch. Tip number 13 is time-lapse. Maybe you already know you can export your drawing as a time-lapse, which is really cool to impress your friends on a social media post. But many of you might not know you can also customize the quality of your exported video from the default setting. When you create a new canvas size under the time-lapse setting, you can choose to export as high as 4K and lossless quality. This will make your exported file a little bigger, but the quality is also much better. Tip number 14 is insert a private photo feature. This is related to time-lapse. When you insert a new photo as a background, you can swipe to the left to insert it as a private photo. What this does is when you export as a time-lapse, this layer will not be recorded. Where this is useful is if you're tracing from a SketchUp background, the SketchUp background will not show up in the recording. Tip number 15 is alpha lock, which is a technique that I use very often when coloring. What alpha lock does when enabled is restricting any new paint to affect only the area of the existing layer. For example, if I'm trying to imitate a watercolor effect for a sky, I will first paint with a singular color and go into my layer option, left swipe as a shortcut to enable alpha lock and pick another color to vary the gradient in the sky. This technique can be applied to trees and vegetations as well. Tip number 16 is using the multiply blending mode to insert people as a reference into your drawing. I'm not great at drawing people freehand, so what I like to do is go on a website like Mr. Cutout to find the right entourage for my drawing, take a screenshot of it on the iPad and crop it to the area of the person, then copy and paste this directly into Procreate. Since I'm only using this as a reference, I can put this layer on multiply blending mode to get rid of the white background in the image. Then reduce the opacity to find a good location in my composition. Then it's a matter of tracing over it. Tip number 17 is layer masking. This is the same masking technique as Photoshop. You can create a mask for a layer so you can edit non-destructively. For example, if I need to erase something that I'm not 100% sure, I can use the black brush to paint on the layer mask to basically hide the part of the drawing. This is just in case I need to bring it back in the future without permanently erasing it. Tip number 18 is to copy multiple layers to another file. Sometimes you will want to copy more than one layer to a different file. In the layer pull down, you can select multiple layers by touching the screen with one finger and swiping right to select multiple layers. When you're ready to move these layers, hold and drag these layers to another Procreate file. Tip number 19 is merging and grouping. Keeping things organized is important to any workflow. This is especially more so when Procreate will put a cap on the maximum number of layers you can have in a single file, depending on your canvas resolution. I like to periodically merge layers and group them carefully so I can turn them on and off when it comes to exporting. Okay, last but not the least, tip number 20 is also organizational related. In the gallery interface, you can also combine multiple files into a stack. You can see I have a stack for every project that I've worked on, which is a lot. To create a stack, tap and hold on one file and drop it on another file. Then you can give it a name. Or you can add a file to an existing stack by dragging the existing stack over a single file. You can also transfer the content of a stack to another stack by dragging it over. Okay, so that was a lot of tips. If you could let me know which one you found most helpful, that would be appreciated. Before you go, make sure you check out some of my Procreate resource in the link below, which includes my brush settings, templates, and study files. Take care and see you next time.